As the promises of socialism fail to materialize, it will test the individual leftist's loyalty to socialism. If Detroit is any indication, this loyalty is strong and unwavering. So strong and unwavering, it is damaging to the individual. But loyalty to an ideology can go much deeper than that and has much more serious consequences for the left. For example, take the Japanese during the final days of World War II. They were so desperate and so committed to Shintoism that they were able to get soldiers and pilots to commit suicide for the emperor. Be it a kamikaze attack or a bonsai charge, Japanese soldiers willingly killed themselves and ended their existence for an ideology. Showing even more dedication to their ideology was when Americans started landing on Japan proper. Both civilians and soldiers committed suicide rather than be taken prisoner. And trumping that display of fanaticism was when soldiers and civilians needlessly killed themselves after Japan surrendered and there was no threat. These people were so dedicated to the Emperor and Shintoism that they'd rather die without them. Ironically, Emperor Hirohito himself didn't even commit suicide, living until 1989, and Shintoism was never banned, merely separated from the government. Now, most people will point out that Shintoism is a religion while leftism is an ideology, and therefore they are not analogous, but the difference is merely semantic. They're both religions. And liberals and leftists run the same risks as their World War II Shinto counterparts because, like their Shinto counterparts, they have nothing else to live for. Understand just how shallow and meaningless your life has to be to the point you take leftism as a religion. I'm not talking about a college student who claims he's a liberal just so he can woo some girl back to his dorm room. I'm talking about the people who are too lazy to achieve anything in life, that they believe declaring themselves a progressive somehow gives them meaning or worth. People who, when I ask them to describe themselves, don't say, I'm a carpenter, or I'm an accountant. They immediately say, I'm progressive, or I'm a liberal, because it is core to their being. If you take their ideology away, what do they have left? The university professor no longer has a point in brainwashing his students. The nonprofit volunteer no longer has people dependent upon her. The green freak no longer derives value on how small his carbon footprint is. And the feminist only has her cats. In the end, their lives are meaningless. This results in an uncomfortable reality for most religious leftists. Since they have nothing besides their politics, their entire value is based on their political ideology being proven right, and they will go to great lengths to protect it. This explains why leftists are not only irrational, but they tend to be very emotional. If you dare to criticize socialism or leftism, they don't view that as a constructive critique of the socialist economic model. They view it as a personal attack on themselves. It also explains why they will probably defend socialism to their grave. Since they have no core, they have no individuality, and they derive their entire value by being a progressive or going green, that ideology has more value than they do as an individual. Therefore, they can't possibly be wrong, because if they are, they negate their own reason for existence. The good news is you don't really have to do anything to exact your toll of revenge in this regard. Yes, you can agitate leftists with empirical economic data, making them feel insecure, but in truth, all you have to do is sit and watch. Since socialism is not sustainable in the long run, watching reality slowly crush their god will prove to be one of the best ways to enjoy the decline.